of Christ our Lord. We worship Christ our Lord. We Oh, nah. 
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Cathedral Faith Ministry on this Christmas Eve morning. Amen. God is good. Amen. Our scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 125, and it reads thus. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. As the mountains are around about Jerusalem, so as the Lord is around about his people, henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lots of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth ha their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the works of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, we thank you, oh God, for another Christmas Eve, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing in our lives and all that you're going to do, oh God. Lord, we praise you and we honor you and we magnify your name, oh God. Lord God, we can't do nothing without you, oh God. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for just being God and being God all by yourself. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, continue to bless our bishop and our first lady, oh God. Bless our church family, oh God. Continue, Father God, to be with those, Father God, that just don't know you, oh God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we honor your name, oh God. Lord, we, we just want to say thank you once more and again, oh God, for all that you have done and all that you're going to do, oh God. Father God, we praise you and we honor you. We magnify your name. Father God, we ask it all. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is he wonderful on this Christmas Eve day? Is he wonderful to you? How good has God been through you, been to you throughout this entire year? Let's give him a praise. We saw it, we're, about, we're embarking on seeing another Christmas day tomorrow morning, and it is indeed a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. We give honor to our pastor and founder, Bishop Richard Johnson, the First Lady, Dr. Peggy Johnson, everyone in their respected places. Um, we first of all thank you for joining us um, virtually online this morning and celebrating um, our king on christmas eve amen no better place to be than in the house of the lord this is as i said a couple of times this is my favorite time of the year um, what they say the most wonderful time of the year so i am so glad um, that we are entering this day um, and it's a blessing to see another day. How many people know somebody didn't make it to Christmas Eve? So we ought to be grateful and glad that God gave us another opportunity to be in his house and to be knocking on the door of another Christmas Eve. Um, do not want to worry your patience long. I'll tell you to be actually very brief this morning. I know everyone is, some of you might be in your kitchen cooking, getting ready for tomorrow. Some of you might be in your Christmas pajama set getting ready to take some pictures and post online <laughs> so we want to give um, God his time but then give everyone their um, time to spend time with their family and friends some of you may be traveling so we pray that God's traveling mercies cover you and your vehicle and the vehicles around you amen as we are um, going to spend time with family amen I'm looking forward to spending some time with mine I mean people know it's good to love your family let me say it again. It's good to love your family. Everybody don't love their family. I love my family, so I'm happy about that. Um, today, um, we're all familiar with the, what we call the Christmas story, the, the Christ born of Mary. Um, so this is not necessarily a new passage of scripture. Um, we're going to go to Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. Um, but I want to bring out some things that God gave me that I think might be a blessing to you um, on this Christmas morning, give us some things to think about before we get to unwrapping all of those gifts and presents and eating too much and trying to run it off the rest of the week, amen. Um, Luke chapter two, um, and let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people. We ask that you open my mind, my heart, to hear what your word is saying to your people. Give us a fresh word that we might use this day to take us forward. We'll forever magnify and praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so again, as I said, this is uh, not an unfamiliar passage of scripture. Um, so we're going to read starting at Luke verses two, excuse me, excuse me, Luke chapter two, verses one through seven. And it says, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census took, um, this census first took place while um, Cornelius, um, who was governing Syria, excuse me, so all went out to be registered, everyone to his own city. Okay, so what's happening here is, is this is basically the, one of the first census in the world. So it was, he declared that in order, you know, everyone needed to, it's not the census that we're accustomed to where you would go, they come to your door. You know, they, <laughs> in modern day, they come to your door, they used to anyhow. They come to the door and ask you all those questions about what's going on in your house, how many people, just that and other. Where in this time, you had to go back to where you were from. So everyone was in the process of um, pilgrimage back to their home area, hometown, their, um, their roots. So verses 4, Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into, the, into Judea to the city of David, um, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one of the house of the lineage of David. So Joseph is going back to his lineage, which is the house of David, and he is going back to um, when they say the city of David, that's technically referring to Jerusalem, but Bethlehem is where he's going to end up at, as, as we all know. Bethlehem is about six or seven miles from Jerusalem, so it would be what we would call the, the suburbs. So he's, um, Bethlehem is the suburbs, and where he's coming from, it is the equivalent to about 70 miles. So that's, say, if you're here in Columbia, he's leaving Somerville and coming to Columbia. Um, if you're in Charlotte, he's maybe what, Greensboro and headed to, um, to, to Charlotte. So 70 miles difference, uh, 70 miles, and they've been traveling, of course, you know, they had to take that journey over seven, several days, so it couldn't just be a one-day trip because they didn't have cars like that. So um, verse 5, to be registered with Mary, his 
betrothed wife who was with child. So it was that while we were, um, excuse me, so it was that while they were there, the days, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. I want to highlight verses seven again. And, they, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Um, today I want to talk about briefly, real briefly, you know, about making room. Make room, that is the title of this message. Make room. Now we've all seen depicted in the movies um, that when you look at the story of the birth of Jesus, we always get to there was no room in the inn. Um, and we always make reference to the innkeeper. What's so really ironic about it is there's technically no reference to the, anyone called the innkeeper. But for the sake of us growing up, not just in church, just growing up in, in this country, we always see the movies where they make reference to, I say, the, you know, the innkeepers at the front door and Mary and Joseph are coming there and they're knocking on the door. There's no room in the inn. <laughs> we have no room. So we always think about... Um, and he's kind of depicted as a, as a negative person. You say, okay, here's this man who is not making room for baby Jesus. He didn't know at the time it was baby Jesus, of course. He was technically just doing his job as an innkeeper. Now, if you look at what was going on at that particular point in time, it would make sense, 100% sense, that the, room, the innkeeper would not have any rooms in the end because there was an influx of people who were coming back because they had to. Um, Caesar had made it um, known, uh, passed the law that you had to come back to your lineage for the census. So it was common, it would have been common at that particular point in time that there might not have been any room in the inn. It could have been at the hotel, what we would call the hotel today, or the motel, Holiday Inn. It would have been booked, no rooms left. So here's Joseph walking up with his pregnant wife and trying to get a room. Now, again, like I said, if you go back to the the rooms, I mean, if you go back to the movies we've seen and how it's depicted, even in church, church stories, we always look and say, well, the innkeeper didn't make room for Christ. But then he decided, he, then you look forward, and then he finds a manger in the back. And that's where Jesus is born. But if you really think about it, and I put a lot of thought into this um, myself, this Christmas, what, what about the innkeeper can we learn from? Because you clearly see on verse 7, he said, um, it says at the end, because there was no room in the end. I think more of us have, we more, a lot of us have more in common with the innkeeper than we want to acknowledge. And I want to give you four points. It's what we should be thinking about making more room for Christ on this day. Now, I'm not, I'm not a person that's going to ever stand up and say anything negative about the gift given and all of that on Christmas because I spoiled my household. But... There is a bigger meaning to Christ's birth, and we should be sharing that meaning and making sure that our children and our children's children understand how important the birth of Christ is. So the first thing I want you to think about that we should be considering um, about making room for Jesus is how many of us are too busy and forget to make room for Jesus? Now, the innkeeper, he wasn't doing anything wrong. He was doing his job. How many of us are so busy at our work doing our job and um, we just forget in our day to make room for Jesus? He made room for the census because it was, it was booked. When it wasn't any rooms. He said there was no room in the inn, but he wasn't making room for Jesus. How many of us are so caught up in everything we have going on that Jesus is looking at us and saying, do you make room for me? Or do I have to fit in where I fit in? Or do I have to just pop up here and there? How many of us are making room for Jesus? Are you concerned more with the trees and the gifts? And again, I love them. I don't, I'm not saying I like them. I love them. I love them. We, we put the tree up in, in, in November. But we have to realize and look at the big picture. Are we making room for Jesus? Are we having these conversations with our children? about Jesus and making sure they understand that he is the reason for the season. The second thing I want to point out to you is, is what room in your life is Jesus wanting us to let him in and we're keeping him out? 
Jesus wants to inhabit every room in our life. This is a time of the year where a lot of people are waking up this morning depressed because of a loss of a loved one, or depressed because this doesn't, this is not where it needs to be in their life. I lost a cousin, a relative, on Christmas Day in, in the evening a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. I, the memories of Christmas are not always positive for everyone, but that also gives an opportunity for God to walk into the room of depression, sadness. Someone is sad today. The, uh, un, we have the ungrateful spirit. You didn't get everything you wanted under the tree. He can walk into that room of ungratefulness. Some of us are covered in everything else we see everyone else having. He wants to walk into the room of, of, of covetousness, grief. Whatever your situation is today, well, and, I, and I, 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 I'm not being um, passive about the fact that I, I truly do understand this day and the day tomorrow will not be smiles for everybody. But if you allow God to enter in wherever you are and whatever you're dealing with, whatever the enemy might be attacking you with, ask God to let him enter that door of, like I said, grief, um, sadness, ungratefulness, depression. And it's, I really want to say the ungratefulness because Lord knows I, my kids' Christmas list was just ridiculous this year. And y'all ain't going to get everything on that list. <laughs> but there is a piece of that that needs to be taught. God is here for us regardless to how little you have or how much you have. And we got to open up him and, and make room for him regardless to whether you're happy with what you got or you're not. Someone is, is sad because, I, you know what, as I said earlier, you're going to post them pictures of your, your pajamas with your family and everybody's going to look like they're happy. Somebody in that, happy, in that in photo ain't really happy. They just putting the picture out there because it's the, what you're supposed to do on Christmas Day. So if you're single and you feeling like, you know what, I don't have nobody else to take that picture, they're putting the pajamas on and take the picture by yourself and post it and be glad and happy with what you have because you're looking at somebody else and you're thinking, oh, I wish I could be where they have. I could wish I could have what they have. And you have no idea the hell some people could be going through and they're just smiling for the picture. And they're saying, you know what, it's Christmas and we got these pajamas on and I'm happy. And then as soon as the picture's done, as soon as they snap the picture, they go back to, all right, man, I'm going in the room. I don't, I don't, I don't have nothing to do with them. Be grateful for where you are. So allow God to make room for God to enter in those difficult spaces in your life, those hard to deal, hard to deal with spaces, and allow him to work on you in the way that he would work on you, not the way you want to work on you, but the way he will work on you. And how many people know and can testify that God will meet you wherever you are? Yeah. Wherever you're dealing with, whatever, however you feel, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, God will meet you exactly where you are. Number three, another area we should be considering. Um, if you think about it, Jesus was born in the manger. He wasn't born in the, the nice inn where they had a bed with some, you know, 300 thread cotton and, you know, gold all around him. He wasn't born that way. He was born in the manger. So the third thing I want to bring to your attention is Jesus isn't looking for you to come to him perfect. He's not looking for you to clean yourself up before you come. If someone has not accepted Christ in your life and you, this is the day that God is pricking your heart and saying to you, you know what, I do need to make room for Christ. Don't think that you can fix it yourself. He's fine with going into your dirty mess. Because guess what? We are all a wretch undone. And without Jesus, we, we, we wouldn't be who we are right now. And we're still striving to make it. So don't try to clean up your mess. He was born in a manger. He didn't come here on a chariot horse. He came, was born in a manger. Don't try to fix your situation and think, well, let me get this together. Let me be perfect. Let me figure out what I can do. Let me try to clean myself up. No, just give God your heart. And that leads to my last point. And um, you, everyone knows, and if you don't know, you're going to know now. I love Christmas music. I love Christmas music. I love it. I started playing it in November. Um, love it all. Love all kind of Christmas music. And this morning when I was taking care of some things, I was, uh, put on the music. And the first song that came on was Joy to the World. I said, okay, that confirms what you want me to talk about. Now, don't get me wrong. I love um, This Christmas. That's one of my favorite songs, but it's not a, it's not a carol. Um, you know, Santa Claus goes straight to the ghetto. I love that song. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all, I love Christmas music. But there is something different about the carols that refer to Christ. And when you look at the lyrics of Joy to the World, let me get ready to go. 
Marvin. Um, I looked up the lyrics to, to go Joy to the World, and I was like, man, that's, when you, when you hear those type songs, they're different than this Christmas. Those are the songs, these, these carols are the ones that touch your spirit, man. And the words to the Joy to, Joy to the World is, Joy to the World, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Prepare him room. I want to leave you with this. The fourth thing I want you to think about today as we look at, are we making room for the king? Is don't just make room for him. Open up your heart to him and receive him. Do both. Make room for him, but make sure that when you're making room for him, you're opening up your heart and you're receiving him. That's don't get so caught up in everything that's going on the next the next two days and we forget that it's all about let every heart prepare him room. Prepare your heart. Start with your heart. Ask God, is my heart really prepared for the king in this season? Or have I gotten a little lost in the bustle and the hustle of everything that we do in this Christmas season? So again, I want you to think about those four things. Prepare your communion, open it up your heart. Don't try to clean up yourself. Come to him and let him come into the rooms of your, of your heart. I mean, it's the rooms of your life. And don't be too busy to make time for Jesus. Let us stand. Let us stand. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we know that it can be a challenging day for some people. But for the people that it's challenging for, Lord, we ask that you make the, that you go in those spaces, Lord, that you heal those wounds, you speak to every hurt heart. We ask that you give them a reason to look at the brighter side of things and say, Lord, if I can't be happy for anything else, I'll be happy because my Savior was born on Christmas Day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people. We ask that you give us a great time of fellowship with our families, a great time of fellowship with our friends. But in the end of the day, we remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. We'll forever magnify you and praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, today, we're not going to do an official big offering. The ways to give should be on the screen. We want you to still give like you would normally do on a Sunday morning, but we don't want to keep the focus on um, fellowship and, 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 um, and spending time with family. It's intended for the service to be short um, so you can get back to spending some time with your folks. Lauren, can you come up and sing that song for me, Joy to the World? Give, give me like two verses of it. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Amen. We want to wish you a happy or Merry Christmas on behalf of Bishop and Dr. Johnson, um, myself, my wife Nina, and my kids, Lamont and his boys, and Tanya, and, um, TK and Josh in Atlanta from the First Family of Cathedral of the Faith. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, and we think I, I got some help. Merry Christmas. Amen. Happy New Year. Amen. Amen. Cedric, if you can come give us benediction, we'll be. Again, once again, Merry Christmas from the Cathedral of Faith family. We thank the Lord for the sermon telling us to definitely make room in our lives for Christ and our families. Uh, now as we come to a close, we ask you, Lord God, to thank you for bringing us to what is almost the close of another year, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for remembering those that are less fortunate than us, Lord God, to pray for other families. And we ask that we all have a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and praise the Lord. Pastor Johnson and I would like to say to you that we wish you a very merry Christmas. 
You know, it's cliche to say that Jesus is the reason for the season. I would like for you to think about this. Without Jesus, there would be no seasons. So we pray that he is with you in every season of your life, and especially during this season when we recognize his birth. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.